Hi everybody and welcome to our video on Project for the Web and Overview. So what is this new Project for the Web anyway? It's the new project service from Microsoft delivered via the Office 365 platform. It's aimed directly at the needs of people we might describe as the occasional or accidental project manager who simply need to manage small and simple projects. It is the perfect tool for people who've been volunteered, you might say, to manage projects, but who have little or no project management skills, knowledge, and experience the way full-time project managers do. Project for the Web allows users to create, plan, and manage small and simple projects quickly and easily. In this graphic, you can see where Project for the Web fits in the current project offerings from Microsoft. At the top is the powerful Project Online, which allows an organization to do enterprise project and portfolio management. At the bottom is the Planner app, which is perfect for work management uses. And in the middle is the new Project for the Web, perfect for managing small and or simple projects. Enough talking. Let's see a demo of this new Project for the Web. To access the new Project for the Web, launch your web browser and navigate to the home page of your organization's Office 365 portal. On the home page, Locate the project icon. If you don't see it on the home page, click the All Apps icon and you will find it. When you click the project icon, the system displays the Project Home page. Project Home is where you can create new projects using Project for the Web. You can also see existing projects of three different types. So, for example, in my Favorites section at the top of the page, you can see there is a project that is listed as a PWA project. That means it was created using Project Online. There's another project that is called the Project Type, and that was created using Project for the Web. And the third type listed is known as a Roadmap. A Roadmap is a high-level report with information from projects from multiple sources. You can even combine information from PWA projects and projects created using Project for the Web. To create a new project using Project for the Web, click the new blank project button in the upper left corner of the screen. The system creates a new project for you using the generic name Untitled Project. You'll first need to rename your project by clicking Untitled Project and typing in the name. The name of this project will be Excel Macros and Formulas. I will be the project manager and the start date of this project will be the first Monday of November. After you've entered this high-level information for your new project, click the Close button in the side pane. The system automatically saves your new Project for the Web project. There is no need to ever save any project. It is done for you automatically. After creating your new project, you're ready to begin the planning process. The first wave of planning is task planning. As with all things in Project for the Web, the task planning process is pretty simple and straightforward. Simply click the Add New Task link and type in the names of the tasks you want in your project. I need the tasks Design, Build, Test, Implement, and hmm, I think I forgot a task. I think I need a task name Rebuild, but it's in, not in the right place. You can actually drag and drop tasks around just like that. 
once you've built your task list, the next step is to estimate task durations. That's pretty simple. All you need to do is type the duration measured in days in the duration column. So for the task design, I estimate two days duration. Build, five days. Test, I think that'll be three days. Rebuild, that'll be two days. Implement, we'll need five days. That's how to do the duration estimating. Then you'll need to set task dependencies. To set task dependencies, I recommend you click the Add Column, Virtual Column, and select the column Depends on Before. And I also recommend that you grab this column header by clicking and holding and drag it to the left so it's immediately to the right of the name column. Now to set task dependencies, again, this is very simple. All you need to do is type the ID number of the predecessor task. In this case, it's number one, design. And for the test task, it'll be number two, build. That is its predecessor. For the rebuild task, it'll be number three, test. And for the implement task, it'll be number four, rebuild. And that takes us through the task planning process. The second wave of the planning process is resource planning, or building your project team. To build your team, click the Group Members button in the upper right corner of the page. In the Group dialog, simply begin typing the names of your team members. So for example, I need Aaron, and that's Aaron Painter. And I need Alex, and that's Alex Darrow. And I need Molly, and that's Molly Dempsey. And lastly, I also need Sonny, and that's Sonny Crockett. Once you've built your project team, click the Create button at the bottom of the dialog. What the system does, it creates a new Office 365 group that carries the same name as your project. The third wave of the planning process is assignment planning. Assignment planning, as the name implies, is the process of assigning resources to tasks in your project schedule. In Project for the Web, again, this is very simple and straightforward. To assign resources to a task, click in the Assign to cell for that task, then click the icon to the right of the cell. What the system will show you is the different resources that are on your project team. So I want, on this particular task design, I want Alex. And on the build task, I want Molly. And on the test task, I need Sunny. On the rebuild task, that goes back to Molly. And then on the implement task, I actually need two resources. I need Alex and I need Aaron. Once you've completed the assignment planning process, your project is completely planned and is ready to go live. After your project has gone live and your team members begin working on the tasks in the project, you will need to manually enter progress on each of the tasks in your schedule. There are two ways to enter progress. The first way is the simplest way of all. When a task is done, you can simply mark it as done by clicking the little radio button to the left of the task name. And when you do that, the system plays the nice little ding sound. And notice that it also formats the task name using the strike through font formatting to indicate the task is completed. When a task is in progress but not yet done, 
The second technique is to float your mouse pointer over the task name and in the name column click the little open details button. The system displays a dialog or side pane on the right side of the screen containing a percent complete field. In the percent complete field enter the percent complete value for the team member and then press the tab key on your computer keyboard to navigate to the deck cell. That's the two ways to enter progress. Again, notice, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. While working with your project in Project for the Web, the system allows you to apply three different views to your project to look at your project three different ways. These three views are the grid, board, and timeline views shown at the top. Notice the grid view is the default view, and that's the view that I've been working with all along. In this view, you can do things like you can narrow columns. You can move columns around as you wish. You can add new columns. You can even hide columns if you ever want to by clicking in the column header and choosing hide column. Let's take a look at the board view. When you apply the board view, the default grouping shown in the upper right corner is by progress. This board view shows three buckets named not started, in progress, and completed. As you manually enter progress on tasks in your schedule, the tasks will be moved into their appropriate bucket. You can see design is in the completed bucket and build is in the in progress bucket. You do have two other ways to group by bucket. That is actually a custom view where you can design your own buckets to organize the tasks in a manner that makes the most sense to you and then you can drag the tasks into the appropriate bucket. You also have the option to group by finish date, which will organize the tasks into buckets by their finish date as either being in the past, current, or in the future. Let's go back to the progress grouping. The third view is called the timeline view. If you've ever used Microsoft Project, you will immediately recognize that this is a Gantt chart view. The Gantt bar for each task shows the schedule of that task. You can float your mouse pointer over the Gantt bar to see a little floating tooltip that shows you the schedule of the task. And at the top of the page, there's a zoom slider, which allows you to zoom out or zoom in as needed to either see less detail or more detail in your project. So those are the three views available to you in the new Project for the Web. Thank you everyone for watching our video today on the new Project for the Web. If we can be of service to you in helping your organization to implement Project for the Web, Project Online or Project Server, please reach out to us. It would be our privilege to assist your organization. You'll find our contact information on this slide, including our email address, info at fragility.com. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and bye-bye.